In the past, I showed you a folding solar panel that I made using two 12-volt, 100-watt HQST monocrystalline panels that I purchased online. The panels were very good and well worth the money. When HQST recently reached out to me and asked if there were any products that I wanted to review, I told them to send me their 12-volt, 100-amp lithium-iron phosphate battery to test out. If the quality is anything like their solar panels, we should expect pretty good performance. I'm going to be performing a few tests on this battery. One is a load test at or near the maximum continuous current output rating. Another will be to see if I can more than double the max output without damage to the BMS. I'll also see if there's any issues charging close to the maximum input rating. See how the battery reacts to extreme cold temperatures. A battery like this used to sell between $750 and $1,000. That is big money but the price has dropped now to right around 400 bucks. The advantage of lithium iron phosphate 12 volt batteries are they're one third to one half the weight of lead acid. They have a very long cycle life in excess of 2000 times. In the case of this one, the manufacturer states between 2000 and 6000 cycles. When you use a lithium iron phosphate battery, you can expect a much more stable output voltage under load. So if this was a lead acid battery and it was connected to a power inverter with a high current draw, you would see the voltage just continue to drop straight down at an angle. Lithium iron phosphate batteries, you would see the voltage initially drop and then it would go sideways for a while and then at the very end it would start to drop off. And another great feature of a lithium iron phosphate battery is that you can drain it all the way down. Now a lead acid battery, you cannot drain it all the way down because you'll damage it. So typically you might drain it 40 to 50%. You go below that, you're going to cause damage. The battery you see here uses triple sealed construction and it has these straps that go all the way around. You can grab the handle, pick up the battery, no problem at all. And over here you have these caps on your hex bolts. Two different sizes are included. To secure the cable to the battery. If we take a look right over here at this panel, you can see the rating at 1280 watt hours, 12.8 volts, 100 amp hour, and the maximum input voltage for this battery is 14.6. This battery has a built in 100 amp BMS. It is fairly lightweight, it's around 26 and a half pounds or 12 kilograms. This battery has a life expectancy of 10 years. And if it's fully charged, it will have a two-year shelf life. According to HQST, the self-discharge rate for this battery is below 3% per month. A battery like this is ideal to take to a campsite with a power inverter. You can use it for off-grid solar and much more. This battery is not designed to be connected in series to give you 24 volts. It's only designed to be connected in parallel to increase the current capacity. The dimensions for this battery, 10.2 inches long or 26 centimeters, 9.7 inches tall or 24.6 centimeters, and the width of the battery is 6.2 inches or 15 and 3 quarter centimeters. Now the tests I'm going to be doing in this video, even though they're helpful, it's not going to give us an idea of how well this battery is going to perform over years or after a lot of cycles. It's a very difficult and time consuming thing to do. Right now the voltage is at 13.15. Once this battery is fully charged up to 14.5 or 14.6 volts, I'm going to connect it up to a power inverter and I'm going to leave a load connected to this battery until it's fully drained. One thing to note, when you connect this up to an inverter, the power inverter usually protects the battery from excessive discharge. And that voltage range is typically 10 to 10 and a half volts the manufacturer claims that this does have a low voltage cutoff, but I read online a few people said it goes too low. So we're going to be checking that out. First I'll use the inverter, and if it turns off around 10.5 volts, the next thing I'll do is just connect up a high current load directly to this battery, and we'll see if it actually turns off. Okay, the battery's been under charge at a 25 amp rate for just over two hours. And you can see the voltage right down here, 14.5. Okay, for the first test, what I'd like to do with the battery fully charged is just take a look at the maximum current output for the BMS. The company states 100 amps maximum continuous output 
and you can charge it with up to 50 amps. Over here is a clamp meter. I'm going to put my camera right on it so you can see. I'm going to power up the toaster oven and the hair dryer using this power inverter. And it's going to have over 200 amps show up. Let's see how long it can run. It ran 3 minutes and 15 seconds at 214 amps. I'm going to allow the battery to cool down, then I'll charge it, and then we're going to perform the constant current test. Okay, you can see the battery is now fully charged at almost 14.4 volts. I have a toaster oven, a spotlight, and a hair dryer. Hair dryer is on low warm, and that's on a setting around 400-500 watts. Over here, you're going to see 100 amps being drawn through the three cables that are held very tightly together. Let's get the test going. Okay, it ran 43 minutes at an average of 103 amps before the BMS opened up the circuit, disconnecting all the power. So the battery got just a little too hot at 103 amps. What I'm going to do is allow the battery to cool off a little bit, and then I'm going to continue with the test. When I turned everything on the second time, the current draw was higher because in order to maintain a 122 volt output at the inverter, as the battery voltage drops, you draw more current. So the average current was around 105 or 106 amps, and it ran for 57 minutes. So there's definitely no problem getting 100 amp hour capacity from this battery. Now to see at what level the BMS in this battery is going to be disconnecting power to the output, I disconnected the inverter and I connected up a 100 watt halogen lamp. Normally you want to see the maximum discharge for each one of the four cells in here around 2.5 volts. That would make 10 volts before this turns off. But we're going to see how low it goes. Sometimes they go as low as 2.3 or 2.2 volts. Alright, you really don't want to take the cells down that low because you're going to end up shortening the life of them. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my two chargers. I have one that puts out 25 amps and another one that does 20. I'm going to put both together on the battery because they said the maximum is 50. We'll be very close to that. I'm going to fully charge this. When it cools down, I'm going to place it in the freezer and connect up a load to it to make sure it does not output power. The battery is now fully charged. It took two hours and 20 minutes, and there was minimal heating on top where the BMS is located. 1401, 1402. For this test, I'm going to take this battery, place it inside my freezer. The temperature has been adjusted to 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 7C. I'm going to leave it inside the freezer for five hours. I want to make sure that the BMS does its job and disconnects the power from these terminals when the temperatures are very low. The battery's been inside the freezer for five hours at an average temperature of 18 Fahrenheit or minus 8C. I'm going to open the door very quickly, take the battery out, put it on the counter, and see if the voltage is present at the terminals. Let's see if there's any voltage present at the terminals. And there is. All right. That's not so good. This battery is supposed to prevent power at these terminals when the temperature drops below zero Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're going to be using this outdoors, be very careful because it does not appear to be disconnecting power to the terminals. Just to double check with a halogen lamp, power still at these terminals even with temperatures below zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see if it charges being this cold. 
So let me turn this on. If you see any current right here, that's going to indicate that power is flowing in. Yep, and it's taking a charge. So to recap, can this battery supply up to 100 amps continuously? Based on my testing, using an average of 105 amps for the first 45 minutes, and then a little higher current for the next 15 minutes, I would say yes. The manufacturer states you want to keep the maximum output between 95 and 100, so I was just a little bit over. If you lowered the current down, more than likely there would not be any issues. Can you more than double the BMS output for a short period of time without damage? Yes. The input charge rating for the BMS on this battery is 50 amps maximum. I did test it using 45 because that's all I had on hand and there were no issues. Does the cold temperature protection work for this BMS? Based on my testing for five and a half hours, at an average temperature of minus 8C or 20 degrees Fahrenheit, no. But there's always a chance that it takes this battery a lot longer to cool down because it's very well insulated. If the battery was left inside the freezer for 10 to 12 hours, there's probably a good chance that the BMS would trigger due to low temperature. Does this battery have low voltage cutoff protection? It does, but it's a little lower than I'd like to see. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.